So, so I'd like to uh, uh, welcome uh, Oliver, who, uh, yes, it, he actually he was supposed to be introduced by Gabor Tardos and I, uh, uh, so, so I steal from him that, that uh, they have known each other for, for, for a long time because Oliver was a classmate of, uh, uh, of uh, Jakob Tardos. But uh, he wasn't a, a classmate of uh, of uh, any of my children. Anyway, uh, he is uh, of the, the, the Hungarian Combinatoric School. Even if he, even if he left Hungary uh, right after high school, he's very uh, proud of him and his uh, uh, promising talent. Uh, and uh, proved uh, a number of beautiful things, and uh, uh, this is this is a recent result, which is one of those beautiful things. And I'm very happy that uh, he came all the way to to Moscow to speak about that. So thanks, Oliver. Thank you very much for the wonderful introduction and for the invitation to speak here. I'll I'll be talking about some uh, joint work with Cosmin Pohuata who is at Yale, and it's a variant of uh, the usual Zarenkiewicz problem. Um, so let me start by um, talking a bit about the, you know, the, the usual problem. Uh, it asks for the maximum number of edges in a KTT-free bipartite graph, uh, in which uh, the host graph has n vertices on each side. And we think of uh, T as a, a fixed positive integer and n tends to infinity and we are usually interested in the uh, order of the magnitude of the function. And we, we write x and kdt for, for this function. Um, so a classical old result of Kovari, Shosh, and Turan is that uh, uh, this uh, function is uh, at most constant times n to the 2 minus 1 over t. But it's still not known whether this is uh, tight or not, other than for, it's known for um, t equals 2 and 3. But for t equals 4 already, we, we don't have a, an exact answer. We have a, the be actually the best uh, uh, lower bound comes from uh, the k33 construction. So any k33, uh, k, sorry, k33 uh, graph is k44. A three as well, um, and for five we have a, a, a different, a, a better construction, um, which gives seven over four. Note that the upper bound uh, is two minus one over five. So uh, uh, that's that's a, still not a matching bound. Uh, for, for six, uh, the best bound comes from K55. And for general T, the best bound is due to Bowman and Kivash. Uh, but as you can see, the exponent is um, two to the minus, sorry, n to the two minus uh, two over T plus one. So there is uh, some kind of two factor difference as the upper bound is two minus one over T. Um, there is one case where it's known that the upper bound is tight, which is if we allow the, the bipartite graph to be unbalanced, uh, one side is much bigger than the other. In that case, we know that uh, 2 minus 1 over t is the right exponent. Okay, uh, what I want to talk about is a uh, slightly different version. Um, and let me introduce the necessary concept. So VC dimension is an important parameter for set systems normally, not for graphs. Uh, um, so if F is a set system on ground set V, then we say that the subset is shattered 
if uh, we get have each of its subsets uh, by intersecting it with, with members of F. So, uh, and the VC dimension is the largest, is the size of the largest set that is shattered. So how do we define VC dimension for graphs then? Well, we, we have to cook up some uh, set system. So the set system will be the set of neighborhoods uh, and the, all, all those sets will live on the vertex set. So the ground set will be the vertex set of the graph. Uh, when it's, the graph is bipartite, it's perhaps more natural to consider just neighborhoods of one part. So you consider neighborhood of F vertex B in set capital B, and they form a vertex set with the ground set A, the other part. Um, and this, then you define the, the VC dimension of G to be the VC dimension of this set system. So a, a, a related notion, VC dimension is the shatter function, again defined for set systems. So it's, uh, so it's a function um, and at, at value Z, it, it uh, tells you how many subsets of a set of sizes Z can be obtained by intersection with members of F. So basically, uh, uh, we know that uh, if if there is so let's say if, if there is a set of size z which is shattered, then then uh, pi of z would be uh, two to the z because every single subset is obtained by intersection. If it's if there is no set which is shattered, then then it's going to be strictly less than two to the z. And an important result relating VC dimension and and shattered function is this. Uh, classical result, which says that if you have BC dimension D, then you have this, this bound for the shatter function. So it's, it's roughly constant, it's at most constant times Z to the D. So <clears throat> it's, it's uh, quite nice and naively, naively we'd already know that for, for, Z, for Z larger than D, it must be less than two to the Z because not every, not every subset is shattered, but we get this much stronger bound, which is Z to the D. Uh, okay. And now I want to talk about the motivation of our work, which comes from a, a, a great result of Volksbach, Schaeffer, Suk, and Zal. Um, it's, this is a paper about um, the zarenki of its problem in uh, for, for a semi-algebraic graphs. Um, and one of their main results in the paper is, is this. So they, they basically consider uh, Zarenkiewicz's problem in the case where the graph has a shatter function bounded by Z to the D. Um, so they allow uh, Set, uh, parts of different size, so A has part M, B has part N, and the assumption is that the neighborhoods form a set system which has shattered function at most Z, is constant times Z to the D. If now you forbid K, uh, KTT, then what you get is, is not, not uh, N to the 2 minus 1 over D, uh, as, in the, as in the usual case, but you get something which only depends on D, so even if T was enormous uh, and, 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 and D is small, um, this gives a, then this gives a, a much um, better bound than the Kirby short to run. So somehow it, 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 it kind of says that the maximum number of edges depends more on the VC dimension condition, uh, sorry, the shatter function condition than on the KTT freeness. Um, so perhaps it's uh, useful to just simplify it for the case where the sets have equal size, m equals n. 
And I will also state a corollary for VC dimension. So as I said, if, if the graph, if the, if, if the set system has VC dimension at most the D, then the shatter function is at most constant times Z to the D. So this, so this corollary follows uh, immediately. Uh, and again, you see that the bound is exponents to two minus one over D rather than two minus one over T. For large D, it's a, a better bound. Um, and what we want to, if you want, well, we want to investigate basically this corollary, whether this is tight or not. So their shatter function result is tight, and m equals m. And I, I'm going to show you why. Um, so you can take, a, as I said earlier in one of the first si slides, that there are KDD factorial free bipartite graphs with constant times n to the uh, 2 minus 1 over d edges. And I'm, I'm, I, I, will, I claim that any such graph has shatter function at most uh, constant times z, z to the d. So why? So again, the assumption is that the graph is doesn't contain KDD factorial. So <clears throat> any, take, take a set of size Z. We need to count how many subsets of it are obtained by intersections. Back into the number of vertices in B, which in, whose neighborhoods intersect this uh, set in at least the elements is at most, is less than Z uh, choose D times D factorial. Because for any, any subset of Z of size D, there are at most, there are less than D factorial common neighbors by the KDD factorial freeness condition. So if you count how many possible intersections uh, can be, and, and for those, how many possible Bs you can choose, uh, then you get that there are at most. Um, this many verses in B which intersect S in a set of size at least D. And then there are the subsets of S of size at most D minus one, which can also be perhaps obtained by intersections, but altogether you still only get this sum, and this is at most constant times Z to the D. So, that, so that, that, that is tied, but what about the VC dimension version? So that VC dimension that was being at most D is a slightly stronger condition, so maybe then it's not tight. And indeed, if we are going to show that it, then, it's, then we can improve it. Uh, we can't improve it for D equals 2 because then, then, it, then it's tied, because um, if you have a KTT free graph that has VC dimension at most 2. Uh, why is that? Because um, if a set of size 3 is shattered, you just work out what that means, and, 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 and it automatically gives you a two, K22. But you can find K223 graphs with and the three halves edges, so you can't improve the bound for D equals 2. But we can improve it for D greater than 2, and that's uh, so our theorem, uh, <clears throat> D and T are fixed. G is a KTT free bipartite graph, graph which has VC dimension at most D. Then the number of edges in, in G is, at, is, is little O and the two minus one over D. Okay, so I, I want to give some um, ideas uh, of the proof first, uh, some related problems, how, how, one, how one approaches this problem, perhaps. Uh, so what does it mean to say that G has VC dimension that was D? It means that no set of size D plus one is shattered. So we have to understand, we want to understand what it, what it means that the deep set of D, size D plus one is shattered. That's the same thing as saying that G contains some subgraph FD as an induced subgraph. Uh, what is that graph? So 
the graph will have, it's a bipartite graph, it will have two parts. One part will have size d plus one, which corresponds to the shattered d plus one set. And the other part will be the two to the d, d plus one vertices whose neighborhoods will show that this set is indeed shattered. So for every subset of X, there is a different vertex on the other side whose neighborhood is exactly that subset. So I'll, I'll, I'll draw a picture. So this is for F2. You have a set of size three, and on the other side, you have one vertex for corresponding to every corresponding to every subset. Now you can see that the first vertex uh, is neighbor to all vertices of X. The second vertex of Y is neighbor to two vertices. So on, so is the third, but to a different set of two vertices and so on. The last vertex is not neighbor to anyone. So to prove that the graph has VC dimension greater than D, is equivalent to finding this as an induced subgraph. Uh, sorry to, to, to interrupt. Uh, the, this is, uh, of course, uh, it's a strange induced subgraph because within X and within Y, there can be edges. Yes, so... Uh, there, there's no good word for that, right? Yes, so that's why it's quite convenient that we, we consider... We, we, our first graph is bipartite, so... Uh, uh, we don't really, we can't really have that. So you that. say that G is bipartite, you start with G bipartite. G is bipartite, yeah, 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 G is bipartite. Okay, thanks. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so, um, yeah, so we want to, to prove that if you have constant times n to the D minus one over D, edges, then you either get, get a, a complete bipartite graph KTT, or the VC dimension is at least D plus one. And the second and the latter condition would amount to finding this induced subgraph. But what if we just want to find this graph, not as an induced subgraph, but just as a subgraph? And, 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 and it's uh, probably not super different because um, we want to minimize the number of edges so that the graph will be fairly sparse. It will have two to the, uh, n to the two minus one over the edges roughly. So it will be fairly sparse. So it's, it's, it's harder to find edges than non-edges. So really finding the subgraph should be the, the bottleneck. So let's study this extremal number of that bipartite graph. And now we don't want it to be induced. So how many edges can a bipartite graph have on n plus n vertices without containing FD? And the thing about FD is that F in, in one of the parts, F all but one vertices have degree at most D. So you have one vertex of degree D plus one, but all other vertices correspond to Small, strictly smaller subsets, so they have that degree at most D. And th uh, there are results for such situations. So it's a very famous result, important result of Furedi, and then later different methods by Alon, Kuvavich, and Sudakov. They proved that if H is a bipartite graph in which one of the parts have, in, in one of the parts, every vertex has degree at most D then the extremal number is uh, at most n to the two minus one over d. And okay, so in our case, one vertex has larger degree, but actually the alon kribalovich sudakov dependent random choice proof gives that you can strengthen this, and I just changed the text of the theorem. Uh, one of the parts, all but at most d vertices have degree at most d. So this then already covers our graph because uh, only one vertex has degree at most d on that side. Sorry, sorry. One vertex has degree more than d. Um, uh, sorry, but but the the role of n is different, right? I mean, in in your 
the role of N, I mean, N. we are talking about the N is 2 to the D, uh, right? I mean, you're, you were talking about the graph where on one side you have two to the D vertices, and on one side D vertices. Uh, That's forbidden. So the host graph, the, the, it's always the host graph which has size N, uh, and uh, D is the max degree on, on one part in the, in the, in the small graph. So I'm, I'm missing something because you said there is some forbidden graph you want to show that it exists in case yeah. and and that forbidden graph has has uh, d representing the shuttered sorry d plus one representing the shuttered set and on the other side you have for all subsets so two to the d uh, vertices right that's right that's right and among these two to the d only among them you know that one vertex can have degree d plus one and the rest at most people. Yes. It's not, it's not, okay. I'm just, just so checking. It, it, it's always that, so the assumption, the assumption is about the forbidden graphs. It's the, about, it's for the forbidden graph has ah. one vertex, one exceptional vertex and then all other vertices. Oh, have oh, oh, yeah, you're right, right, right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, okay. please ask questions if something's not clear. Um, so this would apply, and then this would give us that uh, if you if we want to find it as a subgraph, not necessarily an induced subgraph, but as a subgraph, then this many edges are enough. But we want to go below that. We want to show a little low. There is an, a, a recent great result uh, by uh, Sudakov and Tomon. They proved that uh, if H and again, H again has this property that in one part, every vertex has degree at most D. Uh, but now we also assume that H is KDD free. Then we can go below this and to the one, two minus one over D. So some, uh, some additional assumption is needed, of course, because we already know that KDD factorial does have order of magnitude and to the two minus one over D. So, so we have to form, we have to say something extra about H and, and what we what we what we can say is that it's KDD free, um, and then we have this little O. So now now we do want every vertex to be of degree at most D. So so this is looking like something what we need. So we 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 need to. Basically, to do things first, we want induced subgraph, not just a subgraph, and we want we do have that extra vertex, which is which has degree more than d. So, but nevertheless, the, our proof is going to be somewhat similar to theirs. Um, so, our goal is to show that if we have constant times two to the one uh, n to the two minus one over d edges, then we either find a shattered subset of size d minus d plus one or a KTT. And this is one of the key lemmas. So we assume that not just we have many edges, but minimum degrees large. It's a very standard reduction. Uh, we can assume that the minimum degree is at least constant times n to the 1 minus 1 over d. And then for every x in b, one of these two things will happen. So either we find, first scenario is either we find a large set R in which every uh, set of size, subset of size D is very well behaved, meaning that they have large, they have large uh, common neighborhoods. So ND stands for the common neighborhood of, of the set D. Uh, and then that's really it's really quite good because then uh, we are we are fairly we are fairly free to choose their their neighbors which will have the prescribed intersections. Or in the second case, we we are looking for for again sets of size R. R here is a large constant. So this is this statement is true for 
n is n is six r if n is large enough. Second case, we are looking for again a large set. So that every set of every subset of size these is, is is kind of well behaved, but not not that well behaved. So they have a common neighbor other than x. Of course, if they are in n x, then x is an automatically a common neighbor. But we do have an, at least one other common neighbor for every set of size d in R. Uh, but you already see that the second condition will be somewhat uh, more difficult to, to, to use that to get a shattered set. But in the second case, we have many of those sets. In the second scenario, we have nx raised to the power r such sets, constant times that many, which is basically constant times all the r sets. So that's a lot. Now, what I want to show is first I'll show, I'll show you what happens if scenario one holds, then we can actually move to a, a random subset of R, size D plus one, and it will work. It, so assuming that G doesn't contain KDT, if you move to a random subset of, of R of size D plus one, it's gonna be shattered with positive probability. So the assumption is we have a large set R living in NX, such that every D set has large common neighborhood. The fixed sum D set, and I'm asking the question, how many other vertices are there which intersect, whose neighborhoods intersect ND a lot? So a lot means one over d plus one times the whole thing. So that's, d is a constant, so that's constant size intersection. How many uh, vertices intersect that in a uh, linear proportion? And nd is a large set, it has size r, which is a, at least r, which is a big, big constant. Uh, so if it's much bigger than t and d, then, uh, we can't have too many verses which intersect ND, uh, whose neighborhoods intersect ND in many vertices, because then we would find a KDT. If you have a large set and a lot of and a lot of vertices whose neighborhood intersect that large set in, in, in linearly many vertices, then you get a KDT because KDT has extremal number, it has subquadratic extremal number. Any, in other words, any dense graph contains a KTT. Uh, okay, so that means that it, it doesn't typically occur that NZ intersects ND in many vertices. So if you move to a random subset of size D plus one, with positive probability, it doesn't happen at all. So for every Z, which is in the random D plus one set, but not in D, the intersection will be very small compared to ND. Uh, and then we can greedily choose for every subset corresponding uh, vertex in B, which have the, exactly that um, intersection with S. Uh, so we choose something greedily from its neighborhood, which, which, which is not a neighbor of any other vertex in S. Okay, so that's if we have that's the case when we had a very rich set R, like a very good set R in scenario one. Oh, so we okay, so we saw that this takes care of all sets of size D, and but there is the whole set which is of size D plus one, but we all everything lives in NX, so X is the one which uh, whose neighbor. Who, whose neighborhood contains the entire set S. So that this shows that S is shattered completely. And in the second case, I, I'm not gonna um, go into much details here. It's a bit technical. Um, so we have a lot of uh, sets which are kind of promising that every D set has non-trivial intersection. How, how are we going to work with that? Well, this kind of 
promising set R, if you move to a, a subset of size D plus one, it might be shattered, that there is some hope that it's shattered because for every set of size D, there is at least a non-trivial common neighbor. But two problems can occur. One is that perhaps the set of size, subset of size D minus one has very small common neighborhood in which case there might be not enough different neighbors to pick so that uh, each set is, is shattered. Or maybe two, the neighborhoods of two, two D subsets are, are like, maybe they, can, they, they are the same uh, one element set. I ignore, I ignore X, X is always a neighbor, but maybe they are the same one element set outside of X. And then that neighbor is, is not, not good actually for either D subsets because it, then it contains, then it, then it has too big a neighborhood. Um, but in either scenario, in both scenarios can in fact occur, but they can't occur often enough so that they ruin all our, our sets because we have a lot of sets. And in, in each case, there's some degeneracy which, which allows us to argue that it just can't occur that often. I'm just taking one representative case. If, if ND and ND prime for two different sets D and D prime of size D, they have the same intersection X, Y. We, want, we would normally want to use Y for both D and D prime, so we are in a trouble, but this just can't occur that frequently because <clears throat> we, we choose D in roughly NX to the D many ways. And that determines already their common neighbor Y, and now D prime, every vertex in D prime should be a neighbor of Y. And this just doesn't leave us enough choices for those vertices. So it's a bit uh, sketchy, but uh, I don't want to go into more details. But I, I want to quickly prove the lemma. So this is the lemma I stated earlier about the two possible outcomes either a very nice set or many decent sets. So I, I define a, a, an auxiliary D-uniform hypergraph on vertex set NX, where a, a set of size D is a hyperedge, if and only if their neighborhood, common neighborhood is non-trivial, so it contains something other than X. Condition two, so in condition two, the set R, of size R for which every subset D is, uh, has a non-trivial neighborhood, that just, that's the same thing as saying that R forms a complete uh, graph, a KRD, complete D uniform graph on N vertices. So this condition two is saying that we have a, a lot of uh, KRDs. Uh, so how, how can we argue that uh, we have a lot of KRDs. Well, we, we use the hypergraph removal lemma. So uh, the hypergraph removal lemma, uh, allows us to prove, if we prove that we need to remove a uh, number of vertices raised to the power D uh, hyperedges to get rid of all KRDs, then we have uh, a lot of KRDs, as many as we, as many as we want. So we just want to argue that you need to remove constant times NX to the D hyperedges to destroy all KRDs. So there are three kinds of sets which we distinguish between. So there's a, a D set which is not an edge. So then their common neighborhood is just X. Then there, is a, then there are those which, which are edges, but their common neighborhoods are, are not too big. So we color them blue. And there are these sets which have large common neighborhood, common neighborhood of size, at least R. So we actually only look at these sets in NX intersect NY, so for, for every y, for every vertex in B, 
we look, we look inside nx intersect and y. The good thing there is that all those d sets have y as a common neighbor as well as x. So all those d sets are edges. So all those d sets are either blue or red. Now, if there is a, a large set inside, uh, uh, yeah, it should say if there is some R in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If there is a large uh, uh, set, um, if there is a large set in which every set of size D is red, that exactly means that every set of size D has very large common neighborhood. So that's a really rich set. That's exactly what we wanted to, to find in scenario one. So then condition one holds. So we can assume that there is no such set. There is no, com there is no set, R set in which every edge is red. However, by Ramsey's theorem, if you have a, a really large but constant uh, number of vertices, you can either find inside a, a large, uh, then you, you can find inside that a large monochromatic uh, sub subset. Um, and if you're working inside NX intersect NY, then everything is blue or red. And we already forbid, we've already discussed that red monochromatic sets are forbidden, so we must find a large monochromatic blue set. That means that a set in which every D set has a non-trivial common neighbor, but it doesn't have too many of them. Now, these are these all form KRDs, these R sets. So we need to delete one edge from them, from each of them. Uh, okay, so we need to delete in every L set inside every NX intersect NY at least one edge. Uh, at least one blue edge, in fact. Um, and then now it's just a now it's just a, a, a straightforward double counting that we that we need to delete at least <clears throat> this many edges. So in each nx intersect uh, and y, we we will delete this many one over l choose d times d, dx y choose d and we possibly double counted everything at most R times because all our deleted edges were blue, so they didn't have huge common neighbor, so we didn't double count them too much. And if you work out what this is, it's, it's actually uh, precisely nx to the d using uh, our minimum degree condition. So that's the proof of the lemma. And that's what I wanted to say about the proof of our results. So let me finish with some open problems. The most natural one is whether we can improve, improve the least law bound to some power improvement. So is it true that if you have VC dimension at most D, then you have at most n to the two minus one over D minus epsilon edges, or some epsilon greater than zero. And very closely related is the, the question where we don't want to find an induced subgraph FD, but just the subgraph FD. Is it true in that case uh, that this holds? So the, uh, the first, a positive answer to the first will be a, implied a positive, a, a positive answer to the second question. Positive answer to the second question doesn't necessarily imply positive answer to the first question, but it's probably roughly equally difficult. Um, and finally, the result, which was our motivation, the Fox Park Schaeffer Suksa result had a lot of nice geometric applications. Is it the case that our VC dimension version, where we have VC dimension rather than a shadow function, does that have also geometric applications or not? Um, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Oliver. Uh, any questions? Shakar, no. Shakar is uh, 
clapping, I guess. Okay, any questions? Well, I wonder if, uh, if um, so what the best, con what the best uh, construction you are aware of is? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not aware of, uh, I'm not aware of any construction, I think, for general D for sure, I don't, I'm not aware of anything, so. For, so for D equals 3, right, that would be the first thing. D, yeah, D equals 3, uh, well, so D equals 3, it, it's, uh, this FD graph is, is basically the cube with one more vertex joined to to all members of one part so it's a q plus an extra vertex and then um uh so certainly whatever lower bound you have for the cube it's a lower so a lower bound for that um i'd say that probably I mean, I would imagine that the best lower bound is the probabilistic lower bound, actually, uh, because for most bipartite graphs, we don't, I think we don't know better lower bounds than the probabilistic lower bound. And these are basically just forbidding bipartite graphs. So I think the best lower bound is uh, what comes from the probabilistic construction. Any other question? Yeah, so I guess that the problem is that that uh, that the, that uh, the proof uses the uh, removal lemma, right? And then yeah, that, yeah, that, that, uh, that's why it's uh, to, uh, little low. Yeah. Yeah, to to yeah. to make it uh, more effective. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it. Um, it might be that this particular case is slightly easier than improving the, yeah. the pseudocov tomon band because this is a, this is a, a specific graph which uh, is a somewhat sparser than what's allowed there. So um, it may be that here we can avoid uh, using the removal lemma. Yeah. Any other question? So if there is no uh, other question, that, that thank you very much again for the wonderful talk and for thank congratulations you. for the nice result. Thank you.